Welcome to Your Town Television Program. I'm your host, Paula McNabb. Again, we're back with another great, informative, interesting, poignant topic and guest. And my guest today is Joy Smith, and she is the co-founder and president of, and I'm going to get this wrong, so I'm going to read it, Papillon Center for Loss and Transition. And the reason I do that is because it's extremely important to honor what the work is. And I want to start with honoring you. Joy, thank you for being here and thank mm -hmm. you for your work. You're welcome. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's it's a great a great pleasure. And I think that grieving is such a um a misunderstood, um a scary, a I'll even use the word dark mm -hmm. topic in our society. And when you and I first started talking about doing this, I asked you you know some questions and you said something that struck me and I think will always stick with me and you said we are a grief illiterate society mm -hmm. what does that mean Joy? Well I think it means I sort of step back into what we are coached in valuing as uh, Americans mm. or an industrial mm. you know we are coached to gain things to get more money oh, yes. or to get a better education to get a new car and this is what we reward our children for, and this is what we're rewarded for mm. as adults. But rarely are we given any coaching about what to do when we lose something. Oh, wow. And so whether it's a loss of a relationship, oh. or even me, I have a little mini grief reaction when I lose my keys, mm -hmm. right? Um, but when someone has lost through death someone that they hold dear, the majority of those folks find themselves in a place where they feel not understood. Yeah. And um, well-meaning friends and family say things that they think are loving and helpful, but often they miss the mark. And so that leaves our um, people who are grieving, feeling isolated, and really needing some support and some coaching about this very normal human experience. Mm -hmm. It's a very difficult one, but mm -hmm. it's very normal. Right. So we talk about living in a grief illiterate world and that helps the people who come to Papillon uh, understand why they have been struggling or one mm -hmm. reason perhaps why they've mm -hmm. been struggling. Mm -hmm. That's such a powerful point. We're, we're, our society is about mm -hmm. acquiring. That's right. Mm -hmm. I've never thought of that before but we have no training and what do we do mm -hmm. when things go away or shift. I want to come back later in the program to what you talked about about the well-meaning friends and family. Okay. But first I want to go to, tell us about Papillon. What is the mission? First of all, what does the word mean? It's a beautiful word. Mm -hmm. And what is your mission? So Papillon is French mm -hmm. for butterfly. Mm -hmm. And um, as we were trying to brainstorm how this was going to look, uh, the co-founder, Helen Grady, and uh -huh. myself, um, the metaphor of a butterfly really is a lot about grief because people are like caterpillars and then in their grieving state they go into a cocoon. Mm -hmm. It's messy in there mm -hmm. and they're alone and it's dark and with time, with patience and of course with our work, support, mm -hmm. um, when it's such a delight for me to see people emerge yeah. from this experience yeah in a different state and often they are very very beautiful to mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Oh that's and, uh, lovely. So, so that's the name. Um, what we are is we are a um, center uh, for loss and transition. Mm -hmm. um, we're a 501c3, we're a nonprofit, mm -hmm. and um, our mission is to build healthier communities because we believe we can do that mm -hmm. um, by addressing in a professional and compassionate way individuals, families, and children who are experiencing loss and transition. Mm -hmm. That's in essence what our mission right, statement is. Right. And I understand you have several different programs and again we were talking earlier about this of grieving and there are so many aspects to grieving and, and ways of grieving and you mentioned a small grief when you lose your keys. I mean mm -hmm. it, it is in a way. It's mm -hmm. a loss of control and right. power and mm -hmm. a bit of fear and panic and upset and mm -hmm. all of that. I mean it's interesting to think of it. Some of your programs, you've got four specific ones. We have four programs currently. Um, we started with two, mm -hmm. which uh, is our adult drop-in bereavement groups. Right. Okay, so we serve adults no matter what the loss is. 
We have a children's bereavement program called Good Grief for Kids. Mm -hmm. And this goes back to kind of what I said originally. Mm -hmm. If we can coach our children mm -hmm. who have lost a grandpa or a parent or a sibling and make them successfully deal with that experience, mm -hmm. help them to do that, then they're going to be healthier adults. Mm -hmm. So it's the adult program and then the kids program. Um, and we, what, what age uh, are the kids in that program? Um, four to 18. So four, as young as four, excellent, mm -hmm. excellent. Yeah. Four to 18. Uh -huh. so and we where, are, the, where them are these held? They're held at our office, our location, which is in Monterey on Munras Avenue. So Go ahead and give the address, if you will, please. Mm -hmm. It's 824 Munras. Okay. Uh, okay. And so we have an office there, and we're looking for a bigger space. Great. But, um, all of our programs are held there. Okay, great. And so the, you also have a program that I find fascinating and so powerful, PET. We have a pet bereavement program that oh. just started with tremendous support and interest from yes. our veterinary hospitals yes. and SPCA. Again, this is a loss that needs a voice. Yes. Oh, so true. Because our animal companions mm. for many of us are like family members. Oh, they and are. This is where the grief illiteracy comes in because frequently these people are told, well, you can always have another one. Right. You can always get another dog. Right. But that discounts mm. the dog that's gone. Mm -hmm. So that's quite a robust program. Oh, that's an exciting program. Are there any other programs like that around that you're aware no. of? Mm -mm. I, when you mentioned that, I thought, this sounds really valuable. A again, especially in our community. We are such right. a dog-centric dog Mm -hmm. You know, we, we see people on the beach and we recognize their dogs and right. then we look up at them. So, yeah. you know, the dogs are so, our mm -hmm. pets are animals and we're their companions and they're our companions, I think. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we're really happy and thrilled to be able to provide Exciting. that service. Yeah. And then our fourth component that we have right now is um, pregnancy and infant loss. Ah, another topic that is not talked about. Right. These families, these parents do not have a voice for their grief, whether it's a miscarriage or mm -hmm. whether uh, the baby died at birth, whatever mm -hmm. it might be. So um, uh, this program also is very much needed mm. and um, we're, we're happy to be able to provide the service. That's incredible because, you know, I think so often, and, and you say something that's so poignant to me is, you know, they don't have a voice. Mm -hmm. And truly, that's really what we as human beings want. We want to be heard. That's right. Yeah. We want to be heard, mm -hmm. and what a what a great thing for you know a, a woman who has lost a child that that was never born, right. you know, she feels like well, you know, I can't really say anything, or you know, my grief isn't as big as your grief, or mm -hmm. something, and that grief is absolutely valid. Right. I am so mm -hmm. glad to hear that you're addressing that, and that we're having an opportunity to get that information out, yeah. because. The more people that know, the more people that will, will right. benefit. Yeah. Go back to what you were talking about, about the well-meaning friends and family. And I think this is such a difficult thing. I know personally, um, my two very best friends in life have lost their, their sons. Mm -hmm. And I know I searched my own heart and soul to say the right thing, to not say the wrong thing, to, and I know I put my foot in it probably mm -hmm. more than once. How, how, do, how do you help us with that issue? Well, there's a couple of things. I think a lot of people tend to say nothing because mm -hmm. they don't want yeah. to upset the yeah. person. Right. So that's probably rule number one to try to remember is to say the person's name, mm -hmm. to remember stories, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. to keep that memory alive because that's what your friend wants. They mm -hmm. want to hear the name of the person who's who's not there anymore. Um, I think the other thing too is to um, just keep showing up in that person's life mm -hmm. whether I'm an old fashion kind of gal. I like to send cards because I think cards that, are great. Yeah. And so many so of the precious. people I work with, they've got the basket of their cards that were sent to them. And yeah. when they're having a rough day, yeah. they'll often dip back into those cards yeah. and remember how much they're cared about and and how much their loss. Yeah. And even years others. later. Yes. Even years mm -hmm. later. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's been 20 years since Garrett mm -hmm. went, and I remember it so clearly. Right. I mean, I was there when he was born, practically, and to, for me to honor mm -hmm. her by acknowledging and sending a card, thank you for that reminder. Yeah, 
So there's simple things like that. I yeah. think, you know, um, and if you just don't know what to do, just say, I don't know what to say, uh -huh. but uh -huh. I'm thinking about you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's an honest response. Right. And I think that's what, you know, people really want. They just want the honest, gosh, this must be so hard for you. Right. Kind of a response. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And what about this, our society of, you know, well, it's been a year or whatever number. It seems to be the year that people think, oh, well, you should move on. I can't mm -hmm. tell you how many times I've heard a well-meaning friend mm -hmm. or family member say, in, for example, and I'm going to go to the topic of transition, you know, in divorces, and we were mm -hmm. talking about that earlier. Right. Can you speak to transition and people going through transition? Um, yeah, I mean, well, I, as I said, you know, we named our center a center for loss and transition right. because um, there are um, lots of transitions we do in our life that are difficult. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, when you retire or um, if you should um, get divorced, mm -hmm. these are all um, transitions that are, and losses, mm -hmm. that people have come to us and mm -hmm. asked for some support. We've had requests from um, healthcare workers uh, who work with patients who are dying or very sick or traumatized to have support for them, for yes. the healthcare workers, so they can continue to do their work. So, you know, that will be hopefully something that we can do in, in the future in terms of um, other kinds of transition. But to go back to the first part of what you said about um, the expectation that one year things are going right. to be good. You know, a lot of the people, I work with the adults, and many of them say the second year is the hardest because the first year, people are often numb. And ah, true. There's this thing that um, my group calls the grief fog. And the grief fog? Grief fog. Ah, it's in your brain. It's in your brain. You're just not thinking. You're just oh. not together. Right. So by sometimes the second year, a lot of that clears out, oh. and the reality Leaving. of the loss is more apparent. Uh -huh. So we're very careful about what words we use and many of the people I work with um, instead of moving forward they talk about moving along. Oh, that's and, powerful. And that um, you know their grief never ends. We often talk about um, in the beginning grief is huge. It's just like takes up every space in a person's body and it's sharp and it's painful. But with work and time, the grief changes mm -hmm. shape. Mm -hmm. And what, of course, what I love to see is that the grief then becomes a place that a person can live comfortably yes. with. So it doesn't ever go away. No. It just changes. Yeah. And yeah. that's the work that we want to have with our with the people who, who come right. to us. And yeah. you've done some amazing work with ropes courses and, and things about hold how we hold grief and so forth in our body in our bodies yeah well once again because we are young and nimble we can be creative about what we do so we know that not everybody are talkers you know yes. to come to yes. a support True. group and talk True. some people would rather write or use art or do something physical so um, we took uh, 14 adults this spring to the Mount Hermon uh, ropes and adventure course in Santa Cruz and we took them up high uh -huh. through the ropes course. Um, and we did it as a metaphor for grief. I had each one of them, I created these little, uh, somebody on my board created these little wooden butterflies and they put the name of the person who died on uh -huh. it and put them in their back pocket. Uh -huh. So we start out and you know, just like in grief, it, it's very, it can be frightening. Uh -huh. You're having to really challenge yourself and you can't go backwards. Uh -huh you have to keep going uh -huh. forward. And many times I would see one of um, the people I work with reach back and kind of touch their pocket uh -huh. and sort of invoke the strength of yes. the person who's gone. Yes. Everybody made it through. Wow. And everybody learned something about themselves. They learned about the value of a community. They couldn't have done the ropes course alone. They needed us uh -huh. and everybody else there to encourage uh -huh. them and to support them. Um, and they also developed a um, sort of a deeper relationship with the person that had died because that relationship doesn't end. It, it, we just recreate it. And so through the ropes course, yes. they yeah. were able to deepen that ongoing relationship with the person who, was, mm. who had died. All of that are ingredients 
toward healing. Mm. So that was super powerful. Oh, that's amazing. I can feel that in my own body as I'm listening to you mm -hmm. because the grief never goes away. Mm -hmm. and, awesome. and it does change, and it's meant to change, right. and we are meant to change with it. That's right. And mm -hmm. I think one of the most powerful things that I've learned with my journey with my two longest best friends is that that changing and that growing it's meant to be it serves not only you the person who passed mm -hmm. and everyone you're around mm -hmm. and so to step forward into that and own it very openly and again and having the conversation about it is so powerful mm -hmm. you know it's it's just incredible the work you're doing tell people how our listening audience Joy, how they can get involved and how they can help. Well, um, certainly being aware that we exist well, is absolutely super important huge because everybody right. knows somebody who could, might benefit. Yeah. Right. Um, the second thing is, you know, um, come visit us. We're having our first fundraiser. Ah, I have to say, tell us about that. <laughs> yeah, it'll be in November, November fifth, and. Um, it's going to be a super fun event. We have this great piano player coming from Alaska, and he oh. plays a lot of boogie-woogie fun stuff, but uh -huh. then he writes original compositions, which he plays with um, visuals. And so he's written an original piano composition for Papillon, uh -huh. and it will debut that evening, that afternoon, Exciting. with um, visuals from the Monterey Peninsula, which is another source of healing for the people who come to us. We live in a beautiful place, oh. and we access that to help our our, um, the people who come to us. So um, we're really looking forward to that. So that would be wonderful to have. That and where will that event be held? At Embassy Suites. Oh, excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay. And will yeah. that be on a website that people so, can mm -hmm. access? And tell us the website again, please. The website is www.papion-center.org. And spell Papion, please. P A P I L L O N. Perfect. Yes. Because yes. mm -hmm. I know people are very will be very touched by this information and will want to want to get involved. If there was one thought you wanted to leave us with, Joy. What would it be? Um, don't be afraid to oh. grieve. Oh, and thank you. Let organizations like us support you. Thank you, Joy. Thank you so mm -hmm. much for being with us today. What what a what a delight to to share you and your work. And thank you, thank you for being with us. Wow. I'm your host, Paula McNabb. This is Your Town Television. Keep tuning in to see and learn and join us. Thanks.